Welcome to the most watched business show in the country. This is the Business Weekly Show here on CTTV and I am your host, Michael Obodu. Please follow me on Twitter at M Obodu. In the next one hour, we're bringing to you a wrap of all the major business news stories for the week. So if you're ready, let's go. This week started off with the president in the news after his interview with the BBC where he put up a spirited defense of the controversial electronic transfer levy. The levy has faced a lot of resistance since its introduction, but the government has insisted that it is necessary to save the economy from the harsh impact of the COVID-19 outbreak and the Russia-Ukraine war. But former finance minister Seth Tekpe says this posturing of constantly blaming the country's woes on these occurrences is affecting our credibility on the global front. President Nanai Kufado, during the recently aired interview with the BBC's Peter Koche, highlighted the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic and the Russia-Ukraine war on Ghana's economy. According to the president, the impact of the two developments are being experienced across the globe. Let's, let's, let's situate ourselves correctly. The world is going through very difficult times. Ghana is no exception. Nigeria is no exception. There's no country in the world that is escaping the ravages of both COVID-19 and also the impact of the Ukraine. But in what you need to look at are where are the, the, the elements being put on the ground that look beyond the, the COVID and beyond the Russian-Ukraine war. And I think you'll find that in Ghana, the recovery program that we have is one that is, is considered very credible and it is what is going to give us the opportunity to come out of this period a stronger economy. Mm -hmm. And it is that future that we're looking at when we're attracting people. But in an interview with City Business News, former finance minister said Tepe noted that the world is becoming skeptical about the extent to which Ghana uses COVID-19 to explain away its issues. I think the world is becoming skeptical about the extent to which Ghana uses, you know, has become skeptical even, uses COVID. Because we were told quite recently by the World Bank that, you know, for example, Ghana has arrears in excess of 5% of GDP, which is significant. If you take our GDP to be 350 at the time, you know, a billion, 10% is 35 billion. 5% is half of that. And the budget is showing a deficit of 3 billion. So you see, does it mean that when such figures come up and they compare, then there is something still wrong? Because it only shows clearly that when you do the calculation, Ghana's arrears are understated. You know, and you know that the arrears is added to the budget deficit to arrive at the fiscal balance. So is our fiscal balance being understated by 17.5 minus 3? You know, a whopping, you know, what, close to 15 or uh, 14 billion. So these are the things that ring the bell. So to continue, one, to blame everything on COVID and two, you know, to say that the economy was solid. When others, you know, are telling you that before COVID, there were things which were not being disclosed. You know, it's opening the credibility gap, you know, even more. Mr. Tekbe, meanwhile, called for a solid domestic program to get the country out of its current situation. Again, admittedly, you can say the Ukraine war, you know, has not, you know, affected, you know, Ghana. We are not an island. But remember, Remember two things, that before the world was on a recovery trend and countries are still recovering, despite the crude oil price and how it is, it is managed, you know, we had close to 6 billion U.S. dollars for COVID. That's about 36 billion or let's say 30 billion, which is about half of what GRA brings to tackle COVID in one year. So why are we continuing to blame, put every blame on COVID? You know, we talk about the cost of COVID and how government has spent so much on this, so much on that and whatever. What about the revenue that coming? Was it not offsetting it? Was it not offsetting it? Right. So why are you ignoring the revenue bit and always beating the drum on only, you know, uh, expenditures? That is the point that we are making. So what is that? Is, that is fundamentally wrong that all these revenues from stabilization fund to six billion for COVID, you know, granted that COVID did happen. And we are still in this situation. And our indices are worse than other African, you know, countries. So we are saying that our story is becoming unbelievable, you know, and what we need, you know, is a solid program, you know, for it to take us out of the situation in which we find ourselves. 
The Vice President, Dr. Mohamed Ubamia, doesn't seem to agree though. He believes the government has handled the economy well, despite the many challenges it is facing. In a lecture on the state of the economy on Tuesday, Dr. Baumia maintained the management of the fundamentals of the economy has been successful even amid the COVID-19 pandemic. The speech was necessitated by concerns over what many described as the silence of Dr. Mahmoud Baumia in times of economic hardships. This was at a time when prices of goods and services were recording daily increments, four prices hitting an all-time high, transportation costs up to the roof, and a depreciating city. The vice president in his address sought to answer questions ranging from what has happened to the economic fundamentals to how the government is solving the current economic challenges. Unfortunately, the COVID-19 pandemic changed the economic circumstances of virtually every country in the world. Today, our economy is witnessing rising prices of fuel and virtually all commodities like bread, rice, sugar, sachet water, cement, iron rods, and so on from Malata market through Abofo market to Techiman market to Takradi market circle to Pando and almost everywhere across the country, prices are on the rise. Critics have consistently debunked attempts by the government to blame external factors for the current economic situation. They have argued that COVID-19 alone could not be a contributor to the debt situation and accused the government of indiscipline expenses. In an interesting twist, the vice president alluded to these claims. He, however, added charges on extra capacity of power produced and the cost of financial sector cleanup as the causes of the debt situation. In addition to COVID-19, there were two major items of expenditure. In addition to COVID-19, there were two major items of expenditure that are critical to understanding the evolution of the fiscal deficit and the debt stock, the banking sector cleanup and the energy sector excess capacity payment. On the performance of the city, the vice president attributed the recent depreciation, which is the highest since 2015, to a number of factors, including the controversies over portions of the budget and lack of access to sovereign bond markets. The financial markets assessment of the 2022 budget, unfortunately, generally concluded that our projected 40% increase in revenue, which underpinned the 2022 budget, they project the financial markets assessed that this was not likely to materialize and therefore our deficit would increase. This was not helped by the chaotic battle in parliament over the budget and the passage of the budget. And this created uncertainty and signaled to the market that the government may not be able to get most of its programs passed in a tightly balanced parliament. This further reinforced the lack of confidence by investors in the budget. The controversial 1.5% electronic transfer levy, which was recently passed into law, is set to start in May. But prior to its implementation, data from the Bank of Ghana shows a decline in Momo transactions and interoperability in the past few months. Despite these concerns, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia maintains Ghana has the fastest growing mobile money market in Africa. I should note that Ghana is the first country in Africa and one of the first in the world to achieve this type of interoperability between bank accounts and mobile wallets. Even, even in the United States of America, the Federal Reserve Bank does not have interoperability in its real-time payments network. On March 15th this year, just a few weeks ago, Rwanda attained mobile interoperability between their telcos, which allows clients of one telco to send money to clients of another telco. They have not yet been able to achieve the interoperability between the mobile money account and the bank account that we have in Ghana.
maybe we can cut the government some slack because the city is beginning to pick up after its sharp depreciation of over 18 percent this first quarter alone the government as part of its economic recovery plan announced plans to inject two billion dollars to strengthen the ghana city against other currencies especially the dollar and already it appears to be yielding results analysts have confirmed that the city has gained about eight percent on the trading market in the last few weeks the year 2022 especially has recorded some of the worst performances from the local currency, depreciating by 18.2% against the dollar, according to Bloomberg. The continuous hike in fuel prices on the global markets, the Russian-Ukraine war and the high rate of inflation are some of the factors that account for this situation. Data from the Bank of Ghana shows that the first quarter of 2021 saw a bit of stability in the city's performance on the interbank market against major trading currencies, with the local currency experiencing a depreciation of about 1% throughout the first three months of the year. However, the same period this year has seen a continuous depreciation of the city. The local currency started the year selling at about 6 CDs per dollar, but ended the month of March selling at 7 CDs 12 pesos per dollar, representing a depreciation of about 17% in the first three months of 2022. Although the CD is currently selling at 7 CDs 11 pesos on the interbank market, stakeholders say this is an appreciation of the CD in the last few weeks. They attribute this to the fact that people have been speculating a stable currency following the government's announcement to pump an amount of $2 billion into the economy to check the city. Figures on the retail market, however, provide a stronger evidence for the appreciation of the city. Before the finance minister's announcement, the city was seeing about 30% depreciation against the dollar, selling at 8 CD 50 pesos compared to 6 CD 50 pesos recorded in the early part of this year. However, the local currency is selling at 7 cities 50 pesos, translating to an 11% gain in the last few weeks. President of the Ghana Union of Traders Associations, a group which constantly deals with the currencies in their daily transactions, confirmed this to City Business News. When the dollar was 7.6, I came to say that our, our, um, the, our uh, capitals have been uh, depleted by about 16%. And then later, I came that we are going to about 25%. That's when the dollar was um, uh, uh, being sought for around 8.450 and all that. Now it has come back um, um, uh, towards the 7.6, 7.7, 7 uh, thereabout. Uh, it means that um, it has come to the 16% that I was saying, so from the 25. So it's reducing downwards. Uh, it is it, it, reducing, and uh, we believe that when the trend the trend goes like that, it will help businesses. Kinsley Ayensu is a foreign exchange trader at Access Bank Ghana, and he explains to City Business News what exactly is accounting for the change in behaviour of the city and what the way forward is. We had the finance minister announce that we're going to pump about pump about two billion into the economy. This, coupled with other factors, have helped uh, bolster the CD. So, for instance, the monetary policy rates increasing to 17.5 also affected 17, sorry, also affected investments because people rather want to now keep um, their investments in CD because they will get more rather than converting to USD. And this also, I think, that uh, changed the perspective of offshore investors. Again, the, the, the promise of pumping $2 billion into the market also affected people's perception, especially uh, since behavior on the USD is largely based on speculation. People rather thought that CD has hit its limit and would also turn backwards. So... Uh, it led to people who were hoarding dollars, uh, letting go of it now to increase the supply of dollar on the market. Businesses are established a lot of the time to make profits. So when entities begin to record frequent losses, it is a cause for concern. It appears a lot of state-owned enterprises are actually running the country's finances down by constantly recording losses. Data from the 2020 State Ownership Report shows that state-owned enterprises recorded an aggregate loss of 2.61 billion Ghana cities in 2020. 
Despite how bad this might sound, it seems better than the previous year that stood at 5.16 billion Ghana cities. Latest data from the 2020 State Ownership Report reveals that state-owned enterprises recorded an aggregate loss of 2.61 billion cities in 2020. This represents nearly 50% improvement over the 2019 aggregate loss of 5.16 billion Ghana cities. Despite the progress made, only 79 state entities out of 132 submitted audited financial statements. This represents a marked improvement over the maiden state ownership report in 2017, where only five audited financials were submitted for analysis. Despite this, the finance ministry is worried about the trend and wants it to be reversed. It notes that stringent steps are being taken to ensure that the 41 entities that could not honor their reporting obligations do so in the next reporting cycle. According to the report, the combined revenue of state-owned enterprises increased by 19.30% from 37.91 billion cities in 2019 to 45.23 billion cities in 2020. All sectors except the communications and transportation industry recorded improved revenue in 2020 relative to 2019. On the other hand, direct costs incurred by state-owned enterprises collectively in 2020 was high over 32.9 billion cities represent a 12.65% increase from the 29.21 billion cities recorded in 2019. The energy and agricultural sectors were the main contributors, accounting for over 80% of aggregate direct costs of state-owned enterprises in 2020. Total assets of state-owned enterprises, however, stood at 171.63 billion Ghana cities, whilst aggregate liabilities recorded was 119.5 billion Ghana cities in 2020. Also, joint venture companies achieved an aggregate net profit of 11.81 million Ghana cities as compared to the 1.05 billion Ghana cities recorded in 2019. Total revenue decreased by 5.82% from 13.80 billion Ghana cities in 2019 to 13.01 billion Ghana cities in 2020. Three out of the 17 joint venture companies, namely Ghana Rubber Estates Limited, Agricultural Development Bank, Bank and GCB reported consistent increases in total revenue over the five-year period under review. The energy sector represented by GOEL generated the highest total revenue of 5.58 billion Ghana cities for joint venture companies in 2020. Looking ahead, the finance ministry stated that state enterprises are a critical part of the journey to fiscal consolidation and macroeconomic stability. Therefore, non-productive and imprudent approaches must be abandoned for more innovative methods to enable the state entities comply with the directives emerging from cabinet at its first quarter meeting in March 2022. To some financial crime and related stories and the Economic and Organized Crime Office, Yoko, in collaboration with the Ghana Association of Banks, has arrested four persons engaged in SIM swap fraud. According to the Association of Banks, the suspects were picked up at various locations in the country for colluding and illegally accessing the accounts of some Ghanaians from which they stole various amounts. It's such a relief to hear stories like this. At least, we are rest assured that the authorities are working to ensure the safety of our funds. SIM swap fraud or CARES when fraudsters obtain a new SIM card from a person's mobile service provider using the person's registered phone number. The reported value of fraud for 2020 was 1 billion Ghana cities as compared to the over 115 million Ghana cities recorded in 2019. The notable increase in the value reported was a result of high values recorded in attempted correspondent banking fraud. Losses incurred as a result of fraud for 2020 also stand at 25 million Ghana cities as compared to an estimated loss of over 33 million Ghana cities in 2019, representing a 24% decrease. 
Commenting on the successful operation leading to the arrest of the four persons, CEO of the Ghana Association of Bankers, Johnny Wa, cautioned miscreants to be warned as banks have begun sharing intelligence and have also enhanced cooperation with all security agencies, especially Yoko, to rid the banking sector of fraudsters. Um, Yoko, as um, one of the security agencies that we work with, they work with you know, um, organized crimes. So um, some of our member banks recorded attempts and in some cases successful um, um, fraud cases um, regarding this same, same fraud where people are able to more or less clone existing um, phone numbers and um, work at the, their various telecom um, companies to um, get a number that is already in use. And what that happens and the person is able to secure a new SIM, then more or less, as you are using your phone, there is another mirror of your phone, and therefore any person is able to use that to make some changes to your your bank details, because your apps and the rest are all determined by your uh, the phone, the uh, financial services, transaction confirmations, and the like. So we got information from um, our member banks um, about these attempts, and in some cases, the, some successful outcomes. And we quickly um, linked up with Ioko, who really uh, did very, very professional work, a professional job in investigating, going behind the, the scenes and undertaking extensive investigative work, which has, as we have announced today, led to the arrest of four persons uh, who, uh, as we speak, are still going through um, some form of additional levels of investigation. Meanwhile, it is gathered that the suspects are due for interrogation and will be arraigned before court later this week on various charges. Let's talk about the electronic transfer levy. The Traders Advocacy Group Ghana, TAG, says the passage of the levy is unfavorable and will impact on its daily transactions. Even though the group is not entirely against the policy, it has some suggestions that it believes will make the implementation of the levy more convenient for traders. Only a few days after the passage and further assenting to the electronic transaction levy by the president, mobile money vendors told City Business News they had observed what can be termed as panic withdrawals from the general public. This has been corroborated by the Traders Advocacy Group Ghana who say their members have agreed to shift from electronic money transactions to cash-based transactions in order to cut down costs. General Secretary of the Traders Advocacy Group Ghana, Yao Poku, in an interview with City Business News said the group feared the return of the dark days of traders being marked on highway travels. I know it's difficult for government. But we should do it. We shouldn't listen to these technocrats. We shouldn't listen to them too much. They should come to the ground, the, 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 grass, the grassroots of doing business. They, they, they should have a feel of how people are fail, you know, feeling. People are not happy generally. The traders are not happy at all. And it's as if when we talk, they will not listen. They've also taken their decisions that they, they, they will move back to cash-based transactions. Because if you are sourcing locally and you are to send money to a factory, doesn't mean you are still going to add up more. So doing, uh, the, the cost of doing business is going to go up. Mr. Poku added that a greater disadvantage would be suffered by local manufacturers and this is because the traders say they may be forced to import goods which would otherwise have been sourced from local producers, all to avoid charges from the e-levy. The law is seen to direct that um, a levy should be taken from the funds I am moving from my own account to a local uh, manufacturer to source goods from. The law seeks to direct that um, um, a token is taken or something is taken from that money, the seed money that I'm using it to do my business. Some of us have started sourcing locally in the country. 
Because Ministry of Trade, per what they are advising us, is to source from the local industries and then work. This is the situation you are directing our attention to the foreign base again. Because that one, I will carry the money in hand by air and then go and transact my business. We turn to another traders group, the Ghana Union of Traders Associations, Guta, because it wants the government to get Ghana's neighboring countries to also reopen their land borders. It has been more than a week since President Akufuado announced the reopening of Ghana's land and sea borders, two years after closing such entry and exit points following the outbreak of COVID-19. Yet some of our neighbors are yet to do same. President Nanado Dankwe Kufuado's announcement of a reopening of Ghana's land and sea borders, which was made during his 28th COVID-19 national address on March 28, according to him, was part of measures to ease the restrictions brought on by the COVID-19 pandemic. Ghana's land, sea and air borders had been closed since the onset of the coronavirus two years ago as part of measures to prevent the spread of the virus. Some border communities in the country held demonstrations to demand the reopening of the land borders, suggesting that the closure was of no use as some persons continued to use the borders illegally. A little over a week since Ghana reopened its Elubu and Aplau borders, checks by City Business News indicate that those of Ivory Coast and Togo were yet to be reopened. Speaking to City Business News on the situation, President of the Ghana Union of Traders Association, Guta, Dr. Joseph Obing, noted that cross-border trading cannot return to pre-pandemic levels if Ghana's borders are the only ones opened. We cannot do it in isolation because the ECOWAS region were entreated to open the borders by individual member states. And if most of them are not open, then we have to do it wholly with the other ECOWAS states. And our, our president, being the ECOWAS head, has an onerous tax to convince those who haven't opened so that uh, all of us would have uh, opened and then business would start in earnest for us. Because let me tell you, I've always been saying that Africa has tasted a lot of diseases, and Africa has also tasted poverty. Now, I dare to say that uh, poverty is more bitter than diseases. And so whilst we are trying to manage um, the pandemic that has come um, to us, we also have to uh, manage poverty side by side with, with diseases. We don't have to over-concentrate on preventing this disease and then also uh, letting um, poverty grow in our uh, hands. It, it, no, it may not go well for us at all. City TV is live. On DSTV, go to channel 363. On Go TV, access City TV on channel 182. On a digital TV, please press the menu button on the remote control and run a new search on your TV. Take note that without an antenna, you cannot access City TV on your television. City TV can be accessed on a free to air digital box like the Go TV and Star Times box. City TV. It's your world. The Russia-Ukraine war is impacting many countries that depend on imports from the two countries. In Africa, for instance, countries reliant on commodities like wheat, oil and fertilizer components, among others, are already feeling the pinch. Here in Ghana, the cocoa sector is already taking a hit as businesses in Russia and Ukraine that buy Ghana's cocoa products are unable to do so. In our next video, we'll explore the impact of the war on Ghana's cocoa revenue. Dried cocoa beans being collected by farmers. The process is the same almost every year. Ripe cocoa is harvested throughout the year, but in two distinct periods. The larger main crop is harvested from October to March, while the less productive mid-crop harvest goes from April to September. 
The beans is then sold to the state-run Ghana Cocoa Board for onward sales to local and international buyers. All in all, bringing in about $3 billion yearly. Fifi Boafo is the head of public relations at Cocoa Board and shares government's plan of increasing sale to local players from the current 40% plus to about 50%. Currently, about 58% of cocoa beans produced in Ghana are exported. Well, um, uh, recently we've seen some increase in terms of local processing. Um, it has moved to over 40% of our uh, produce locally. Uh, the target set by government is to do a minimum of 50% and uh, we are gradually inch, uh, inching closer to that. We are not there yet, but our expectation is to meet that target. Um, we will not be able to give you specific figures for this year, but that is the target we're working towards. And uh, as much as possible, we are engaging our local processes, uh, ensuring that they, are, they build their capacity and also attract new processing companies to also come in such that we will be able to meet our target. So yes, um, there's been some improvement. We are not there yet, but we'll continue pursuing that agenda of doing a minimum of 50% local processing. The war in Ukraine, however, is causing sleepless nights for some importers and exporters, especially if it prolongs. Data from the Observatory of Economic Complexity, OEC, shows that Ghana exported cocoa beans valued at $24.4 million to Ukraine in 2020. For Russia, on the other hand, Ghana exported cocoa paste, cocoa powder, and cocoa beans worth $38 million, $15.9 million, and $15.7 million, respectively, in the year 2020. So is Ghana at risk of losing out on revenue from lost sales if the war continues? Let's hear from Fifi Boafo again. We do not directly export uh, beans to Russia and Ukraine. However, there are uh, companies that source cocoa from Ghana and they sell to these markets. So uh, you would not say that the war in Russia and Ukraine would not have effect on our markets. But uh, it is difficult to tell, considering the fact that they do not directly source from us, but then they source through third party. Some of the buyers who buy from Ghana actually sell to these markets. So yes, it, it's a concern to us. So is there a way out for Ghana? The good thing is that now Asia is picking up and the, there are traders or buyers from Asia. And according to our trading room, the effect, if it happens that because we will not be able to sell to these markets as a result of the war, the Asian market will be able to compensate for uh, the loss we will encounter as a result of our inability. Of course, if you have the Asian market adding up to what already exists, it increases the market, and when the market increases, it has effect, a better effect on price. Uh, so the expectation will be that are the Asian market and then let us also have the other existing market in addition to it. However, if it happens that okay, in the period of the war we will not be able to sell, it will not be a case that we will not have market for the product because of the coming in of the Asian market. But of course we want more market so that we have better price for our farmers. For the General Agricultural Workers Union, even though farmers are not directly exposed to the impact of the war, they are minded that an institution like Cocoa Board is however exposed to some extent. Edward Karoe is their general secretary. The whole global economy is readjusting. And if a particular company had some connection with the economy of Russia, Ukraine or Belarus, which also then imports your beans, if there are challenges with that company as a result of the, this war, it will certainly affect the purchase of your produce. It's quite fascinating how the prices of items are beginning to shoot up. A bottle of yogurt I used to buy for 7 cities now goes for 10. Interestingly, prices of school supplies are also up. And this is making back-to-school shopping for parents and guardians who are buying for their wards who have gained admission to senior high school quite a challenge. I'm buying what is on the prospectus I went for from the school. 
uh, and I brought it here to buy the items. In fact, very high. They are costive. Because uh, about a week ago, I asked the price of uh, Ecolac, which the woman told me ex, uh, 150 Ghana cities, 150 Ghana, the size I want. But today, it has increased to 2.5, which is 250 Ghana. And uh, this Sanders, the Sanders is here. The other week, I asked of the price, and she said it's 20 cities, but today it's 35. Ni Anan Agbu is one of many parents complaining about the high cost of school items. He's not the only one going through this. The prices has increased. Actually, we don't know what is happening, but actually, maybe the, 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 the rate of uh, power sharing going up as compared to the Ghana city, or maybe, well, recently prices has gone up. Two weeks ago, the Ghana Education Service released the list of candidates of the 2021 Basic Education Certificate Examination who had gained admission into SHS and technical institutes across the country. This means parents had to purchase school items in order for the awards to go to school. A visit by City Business News to the Central Business District showed that some parents and guardians accompanied by their children and wards were in various shops trying to get the items on their prospectus, such as chop boxes, trunks, school bags, books, stationery, buckets, footwear, among others. Some of the traders lamented the fact that the prices of most goods had gone up everywhere and that theirs were no exception. Because of the economy and... Uh, where we've also been picking the items, there has been an increase. So definitely the retailers and the wholesalers might also increase their sales. So at least there has been an increase for, uh, I think, for the, since the reopening of school. Now the price has increased to 100, that they give you discount. Uh, so the textbook now is 100 cities for months, English, science, social, you see, and other uh, subjects. Uh, At first, how much did you used to sell it like from last year? How much At first, it's 65. 65. And now the price has increased to 100. And they give you a discount. Uh -huh. But what can be done to salvage the situation? Since they are complaining, we also don't make enough sales. If the price has been down, definitely the sales will be much, much booster than what we are experiencing now. So, what we think the government needs to do is it's about the economy. Since the fuel price has increased, everything has increased. So they should just try and calm down with the fuel price. We can't do anything unless the price change at the stores. Uh -huh. If you get low, you get very low. Uh -huh. Consumers may be lamenting the high cost of items on the market, but it looks like producers aren't also catching a break because the Ashanti Flower Users Association says many bread producers in the region have been compelled to go out of business due to high cost of production. Even though they were compelled to increase their prices, they say they still were making losses. Comfort Akutia is the president of the Ashanti Flower Users Association. She has been in the bread baking business for the past 35 years. She however says, as a result of the high cost of production in recent weeks, she has since February 2022 stopped operating. She pours out her frustrations to City News. I'm going to go down to the store. I'm going to go 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 to the store. Light bill, water bill, Mavis Kwejil Styles, the chief executive officer of Ochesunyami Bakery at Bantman laments that the high cost of flour and other ingredients has negatively affected her business. Affected production because it's some no nebo ayeding. See, it's some no. Last year, last year, 
na ukuta sika 16000 na kati mi dinya e some 100 bucks and ne ukuta 34000 and so wet me nya e some 100 bucks nti na che se adwuma na ye ye ne de sisi ano enya kora sugar ene sugar drew 400 one sack and so nanka sugar nanka enam 280 and the sugar one bag 400 maji ya tu che se panu adwuma ne de sisi aye ho chire ye pa ya nkase ye ho chire ya ne ebo te ene no de ma to for no we say me me de ma to for ne five cd or they call just succeeding no or say the auto o chrome ni su say succeeding ne board intimate so me ti so enye ye me call e fra ne ante so sugar ya ante so maji ya ante so intimi me da ate so ama no me ti so enye ye ye ti bread ni we ni nyina e de ma o mo succeeding five seed no mo so ato ne succeeding o mo so so mo call ye nto intie na ma ye market na ba form the members of the ashanta fly users association say they'll be forced to once again increase price of bread next week Due to the high cost of flour and other ingredients. They say the price in the apigem. Can I know that you bought two cities? I have bought pada. I did some for you. You bought two cities. Now I'm going to acquire three. They say no. I got three cities. I'm not crying. They this week. I week I be able to move. From Monday, I know I did buy four. Now I bought five from so so. I'm going to buy six. No question. I have bought pada. Say I'm not crying. I'm not angry. E be san ko because e san for no me hu se e price in engineer engineer 350 no two weeks time kran no ye nim de e be ko o mo so aka so o be san atum be ka kra kra ni pa dodo no akra ntimi nto oh and they say ni de e bo ne de o mo tum bi a ye nsu e be tum some bread retailers also say sales have reduced drastically as a result of the recent increase in price of bread as the prices of commodities, among others, continue to rise, we might have to prepare to possibly start paying more for utilities too. The Executive Secretary of the Utilities Regulatory Commission, PURC, Dr. Eshmo Aka, says the Commission will announce the 2022 utility tariff reviews in July. The Western Regional Tour and Interaction with Utility Managers, including Ghana Water, ECG, Gridco, and VRA, according to the Executive Secretary of the Public Utility Regulatory Commission, Dr. Ishmael Aka, is premised on its vision to ensure regulatory auditing and promote transparency in utility services provision. PURC uh, has taken uh, two main thematic areas this year. Uh, one is regulatory auditing, ensuring that utilities uh, enhance their efficiency and serve customers better and also uh, ensuring that PURC invests in systems that can help us while monitor utilities well, verify the data they submit to us, and also forge that collaboration with them. The second one is transparency, uh, making people aware of what we do, uh, also uh, promoting a very close relationship between utilities and consumers, so that in case there are outages and other things, you tell consumers on time, you give them time, you believe uh, the light will come back and uh, other things so that they can also plan their lives. Speaking on calls for tariff review by utilities after a meeting with management of ECG in Takrade, Dr. Aka said it is currently reviewing tariff proposals received from various utility companies. He further revealed that an announcement is scheduled for this July but will depend on the Ghana Utility Performance Index satisfaction which the PRC will also publish this year. Well, this year is a major tariff review year. Uh, we've developed, t normally before we start, we develop guidelines. And these guidelines, we go around to engage utilities, consumers and other groups on the guidelines. After which we ask utilities to submit proposals. These proposals have been submitted. In coming out with the tariff, we look at the proposals, we look at macroeconomic indicators, exchange rate and others. We look at uh, customer service how uh, utilities over the period have also responded to customer concerns. And let me add that this year, PURC is going to start publishing what we call the Ghana Utility Performance Index, looking at the regional performance based on almost customer satisfaction and a number of indicators. So we look at all these things before we come out with the tariff. 
Where we are now is that all utilities have submitted their proposals to, ECG, uh, to PURC. And we've started doing the initial analysis on that. As we speak, it will be very difficult to tell you whether it will go up or it will come down. But we hope to announce the tariff in July. And we're going to engage all consumers, the media, civil society, before we even come out with the tariff. Reacting to plans by PRC to publish the Ghana Utility Performance Index this year, the Western Region Manager of the ECG said it will enhance performance among the utility service providers. I think it's good to be ranked because it helps you to perform better. And uh, for the region, with our uh, performance so far, we've been doing very well, especially with the reliability indices. We've been meeting all the targets this year. So I believe when the ranking starts, we will not have any challenge. We, we hope to come up uh, one of the top regions in the company. As you see commercial buses drive around town, you might want to be on the lookout as some of them are likely to be electric powered. This is because the Ministry of Transport is set to pilot the use of electric buses in Ghana as part of measures being taken by the government to reduce carbon emissions. The Ministry is importing 10 electric buses to pilot in selected cities in the country. Energy transition refers to the global shift from carbon-based systems of energy production and consumption such as oil, gas and fuel woods to clean sources of energy like wind, solar and nuclear energy, though it has been established that Ghana emits just about 0.12% of the world's emissions. There is a need to control the growth of a greenhouse emissions and work towards a net zero future. Ghana is therefore in the process of developing an energy transition plan to work towards this aim. Speaking at a National Energy Transition Forum at Moli in the Savannah region on Tuesday, organized by the Minister of Energy, the Deputy Minister for Transport, Al Hassan Tampuli, announced Ghana is importing 10 electric buses to pilot in the country. The move, Mr. Tampuli said, forms part of measures being taken by the ministry to decarbonize and contribute towards a net zero emission by Ghana. We have a number of electric vehicles running in Accra. Uh, what we don't have are the charging ports. So it's difficult for us to roll out soon enough. But the Ministry of Transport is importing about 10 buses, electric vehicles, for us to pilot and see how we can uh, transition before the time comes. Now you should see those buses, the batteries that they use to charge them. They're huge batteries. They are bigger than this speaker. That's one battery. And so they put those batteries, you know, at the roof of the vehicle. And those are the, vehicle, the, the things that we power. So you will hear the vehicle do, mm, mm. they don't rev. They don't use oil. It's just battery. And the car is moving, no sound. So those of us who like to rev and do, mm, 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 you hear that again. <laughs> So that is part of the thing that you should expect. You will hear that one again, unless you put artificial revenue inside the car. A deputy minister for energy, Dr. Mohammed Amin Adam, also underscored the need for a national energy transition plan. Even as I speak to you today, the British government has approved a coal plant project in Cumbria. And yet they tend to tell us that, don't do it. So how do we reduce our emissions? We expect the West to reduce emissions much more and faster than we will do. Because as you heard from the President, they alone constitute about 76% of the emissions globally. And we in Africa, Africa is just about 3.6% of the global emissions. So we want them to reduce their emissions much more and faster. And secondly, we want them to give us money because we are all suffering from the emissions that they have made in this world over the last century. They have to give us money so that we can use that money to finance interventions that will also enable us to reduce our emissions. What it means is that we must take action now. If not, 
we will not be able to reach the levels of temperature rises targeted at 1.5 degrees Celsius. The globe is warming up and we are warned that if we have to sustain our environment and our lives, then the temperature rises should not exceed 1.5 degrees Celsius. While we celebrate electric buses, we do not use fossil fuel. Ride-hailing app drivers were protesting during the week over concerns in relation to their conditions of service, including the rampant increases of prices at the pump. They are calling on the app service providers to increase fares and also introduce policies to enhance their safety. Noise, chaos and frustration at the Bolt's Ghana office as several of its drivers throng the premises of the facility. They are unhappy with the company citing operational deficiencies. Today we are here to present our petition to Bolt because as regarding the job that we are doing, we have these three apps which are the leading in the market right now. We have Yango, we have Uber, and we have Bolt. But Bolt so far is the leader. And then all the anomalies and all the bad things we are seeing it's always coming from Bolt. You see, they, what we have tried, what we have seen is that they don't care about us. They don't just care about we, the drivers. To be frank, what they care about is the people they will get who will pick us as riders. They also bemoan the lack of a comprehensive policy that aligns with their safety. Last week, Saturday, that was second, around 1.39. Somebody I had, after I dropped somebody, somebody requested telling me that he is going to Osu. Now the person arrived. To my surprise, the person picked my phone and started running into the houses. Like, that is Teshi. I know the exact point. Now, I wanted to come here to just ask them, Oh, Charlie, can you even trace the person? This is, can you go, this is the last person who ordered me around this time. Take the number, look at the person ID, and trace the person and see whether you can even get me my phone. And because of that, from uh, that day up to today, I haven't worked. What happened is that last time, they robbed one of my brother, took his phone, his money and everything and even took him with knife, mark him, rough rough, and he almost died. So what we are pleading to both is that they should try and take the riders, their identity. When we are going to pick a rider, we should know that we are picking a fear. We are but you will not get there and then be picking coffee. They added that the frequent increase in fuel prices is also not helping issues, considering the fact that fuel prices have gone up by more than 40% this year alone. When it comes to fuel, uh, we, all, we are all suffering, both commercial and then private. Uh, so as far as you are a, a car, a transport user, you have your own car, it's, 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 it's cut across. But uh, for both Uber and Yango to factor in, into it, we want them to increase the service fee, uh, uh, the base fare, that is our charges. Currently, it's seven cities and eight cities. So we want, to, we want a base fare of 10 cities. That will help us sustain our business. After hours of protesting at the boat office, is there any sign of hope in getting their concerns addressed? We are hoping that this time around they will listen because ever since they've not been listening to us, uh, Uber has been in this country from 2015. They don't even receive I mean, a hard copy of letters. They recognize drivers, not groups. But this time around, they, they've opened the door. So we trust in and we believe that in a week's time, uh, they, they will listen to us. Well, this is all time will allow us for this week's edition of the Business Weekly Show here on City TV. For more business news stories, check out our website, citybusinessnews.com. Or don't miss the business dashboard. It airs every weekday on City TV at 10 p.m. sharp with a repeat the following day at 7 and 10.30 a.m. My name is Michael Obodu. Follow me on Twitter at mobodu. Catch you same time next week. Stay safe, stay informed. Bye-bye.